Welcome. We're still talking about digital storage, and in this video we're going to talk about how we can solve a problem with CDs and DVDs to figure out how much they can store. Then we're going to define capacitance. Once we've got those little capacitors described, we'll figure out how those uh, CCD cameras work, which are so handy. If we zoom in on a CD, we'd already talked about how it's got these spirals of information. Uh, 1.6 micrometers, we're going to assume that that's our width. And the smallest distance you can have between the lands or the pits is going to be the 0.8 micrometers. Now, if you want information, you're going to have to have a uh, pit and a land uh, together. And so if 0.8 is the largest distance, um, we're going to say that a, uh, say a bit length is going to have to be two of those. So that's two times our 0.8. That's going to give us our 1.6 micrometers. Now we're going to use that in the next problem. Here's a tough problem, I think, on CD data storage and how much it can hold. Take a minute and read it and see if you can figure out maybe a basic starting plan. Where you should start is if you know that this diameter is the 4.8 centimeters and this is the uh, 11.6. Ignore this 12, that's not helpful. Uh, let's figure out how much width there is and how many rings we can have. You just do the 11.6 minus the 4.8. You are going to end up with 6.8 centimeters of width. And you know that if you take that 6.8 times 10 to the negative second meters, divide that by the width of a particular ring, which we know is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 6 meters, we are going to find out that you have about 42,500 rings. Of these 42,500 rings, how long is each one? Well, you look up here, and the smallest one has this diameter, and the biggest one has this one, then the average diameter, you just add them together and divide by 2. That turns out to be 8.2 centimeters is the diameter. Now you want to find the circumference. So the circumference, you should know, is pi times the diameter. And you put that in here. You're going to end up with about 25.8 centimeters as your diameter for each ring. And so then, you just take 42,500 rings times the 25.8 times 10 to the negative second meters, and you are going to get the crazy answer that you have something like 10,900 meters worth of data on that little spiral within the rings. Now, with on that almost 11 kilometers, how many bits are there? Uh, so let's start with 10,900 meters. On the previous slide, we said that one bit was 1.6. So we're going to do 1.6 times 10 to the negative uh, 6, because it's micrometers, meters per bit. If we work that out, we are going to end up with a lot of bits. We're going to get something like 6.8-ish times 10 to the ninth bits. Then, you want to know how many bytes you have. There's 8 bits in a byte, so you divide it by 8, and we are going to get something like 8.6 times 10 to the 8 uh, bytes. And then, you want to turn that into megabytes, and that turns into about 860 megabytes. How about that? Cleverly, you can store information on capacitors. Here's how a capacitor works. It's basically two charged plates, and if you take one of those plates and you put some positive charge on it, 
and if the other plate is grounded, then it will be allowed to build up a negative charge. The symbol for that in a circuit is kind of like a battery, because it does store charge, similar to a battery. So you'll end up with that. The definition for this is this here. So you can take a minute and copy this down. The uh, unit for this uh, is a farad. Uh, and the abbreviation for a farad is a capital F. Uh, and this does break down into a coulomb per volt, how much charge you can store for every volt of potential difference. Now, you probably know that a coulomb of charge is a redonkulous amount. So one farad is big. So you're often going to be dealing in microfarads or nanofarads. A CCD camera would mean that it is a charge coupled device camera or a digital camera that's not using film. And how that cleverly works is that each of these little squares here, uh, if it could talk, it would say, hey, I'm a little capacitor. Or, that's the same thing, or as a pixel. So if you've got lots of pixels, that means you've got lots of small little capacitors. And the more pixels, usually the better it is. And the way this works is that light is going to come in. And then through our old friend, the photoelectric effect. Can't write very well today. Uh, that's going to build up a charge on these little pixels or capacitors and the computer can then store that as information and if it hits certain ones light does or darkness does then it can recognize that and it can generate a picture based on where the light is hitting.